Welcome. Each month I make a summary of the events that occurred on the sun in the previous month, and this video covers the month of April of 2020. The main conclusion I make from all of these observations is that we are now past solar minimum. Let's first take a look and see what the headlines are for April. As I say, I believe we're past solar minimum. Sunspots groups are changing their nature, and that's one of the reasons I believe that we're past solar minimum. Solar cycle 25 seems to be asserting itself. We're seeing more solar cycle 25 regions and fewer solar cycle 24 regions. And so it looks like the grand solar minimum theories must be chucked out of the window for at least another 11 years. Let's start by taking a look at some data from various spacecraft of the sun in April. We'll start with a magnetogram movie from the Solar Dynamics Observatory in HMI. All of these videos will be run at a rate of one day equals one second, so they're very much speeded up. Another convention that's a little unusual is the orientation of these images. In solar physics, east is always on the left and west is always on the right, the exact reverse way round from terrestrial maps. And I'll leave it to you to figure out why that's the case. Now, this is a picture of a magnetogram and there's some things to note about this. These large dark areas are what's called active regions and they are usually associated with sunspots. And there's a color convention associated with the magnetic field. White magnetic field is directed towards you and black magnetic field is directed away from you. That gives us a clue as to which cycle each region belongs to. If in the northern hemisphere, the top half of the picture, black is leading, then that's the cycle 24 region. If white is leading, then it's a solar cycle 25 region, just like the one in the top right hand corner. In the southern hemisphere, it's the exact other way around. You can see that large region in the middle, just below the equator, is an, obviously a solar cycle 24 region because white is leading. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to another feature on here, this one, this is what's called a magnetic bipole. It's like one of these active regions, but it's too small to produce sunspots. And there's lots of them on the sun at any given time. And I use these to determine how the solar cycle is going. So I count those up and see which ones are new cycle and which ones are old cycle and track them with time. I'll show that data later, but I just wanted to show you what I meant by a, a bipole. For our second movie, we're going to look at the Helium-2304 line from the Solar Dynamics Observatory AIA instrument. The temperature of this line is about 50,000 degrees or about 10 times hotter than the surface of the sun. So we're up a little bit higher in the solar atmosphere here. Now there's a number of things to look for on these movies. If you see a structure sticking up above the limb, that's called a prominence. When that rotates onto the disc, it becomes a shadowy dark structure like shown here. That's called a filament. So filaments and prominences are the same thing. This one's a little hard to see, so I'm going to outline it with a dotted white line there. The dark areas are the polar coronal holes, and the bright areas are active regions, again associated with sunspots. Note at the top of the sun, there is a dark area that gets steadily darker and taller and then erupts away from the sun. This is an erupting filament. Here it goes. For our next movie, we're going to take a look up in the corona at very high temperatures. This is again from the Solar Dynamics Observatory's AIA instrument. And this time we're going to look in a line called Iron 12, uh, which is at 193 angstroms. This line shows you temperatures of about a million degrees Kelvin. The things to look out for here is the coronal holes. These are these dark areas. You can see them much more clearly at these high temperatures. And watch how they change as the movie progresses. There's these bright regions 
uh, which are the active regions again, uh, where the sunspots are. And the thing to note here is how dynamic they are as they come across the disk. Now note the region coming over the northwest limb and how dynamic it is as it crosses the disk. So even during quiet times, the sun is quite active. Last, but no means least, is the coronagraph movie. This image is the corona way up above the surface of the sun. In fact, the sun on this scale is about half the size of that dark occulting disk in the middle of the image. These images are from Soho Lasco C2 and C3 instruments. Now what you're looking for here is explosions along this axis. You'll see these two bright areas. These are streamers and coronal mass ejections explode along those and you'll see several of those during the course of the movie. Now these are the things that can cause geomagnetic storms and space weather effects here on Earth. So they're very interesting to us. Watch for the CME off the east limb to the left. Let's take a quick look at the long-term evolution of the Solar Cycle 24 and its transition into Solar Cycle 25. Solar Cycle 24 is shown by this red curve here, and you can see that it peaked in about April of 2014. So when would the solar minimum be? Well, if we blow up this section of the curve, you can see that there was about a six month period when we had hardly any sunspots at all. And I suspect that that's going to be when we eventually call solar minimum to have happened. However, we're gonna to have to wait for a couple of years yet to really make sure that we're past solar minimum and that that was the lowest point. One of the things that seems to be occurring at the moment is the nature of the sunspot groups on the sun are changing. And that gives me some feeling that solar cycle 25 is in fact asserting itself. In 2020, so far, we've had three old cycle regions, solar cycle 24 regions, one in the north and two in the south. But we've had 10 new cycle regions, solar cycle 25, five in each hemisphere. Let's contrast and compare that with 2019. In 2019, we had 23 solar cycle 24 regions, 19 in the north and four in the south. And we had only 12 solar cycle 25 regions, four in the north and 12 in the south. So you can see in 2020, we've had already three times more solar cycle 25 regions than solar cycle 24, whereas last year, the ratio was two to one in favor of solar cycle 24 regions. So we're getting more and more solar cycle 25 and fewer solar cycle 24 regions. Now, the one thing that makes me slightly pause on this is when you look at the lifetimes of these regions. In solar cycle 24 regions are lasting between nine and seven days in the two hemispheres respectively. In solar cycle 25, they're averaging about three days, so they're still shorter lived. Now, I'll be much more happy when those ratios reverse. You often hear on YouTube, people claim that NOAA and NASA have predicted a much lower solar cycle than solar cycle 24. That is not true. This is the official prediction of the NASA NOAA panel to predict the solar cycle. Now my prediction, at least at the moment, is that this will be a little earlier than that. They're predicting the peak in 2025. I reckon it might be 2024. And I think instead of being about 120, uh, for the sunspot number, maybe 140, possibly even a little bit higher. We'll see. What I'm showing you here is a plot of the percentage of number of new cycle bipoles to the number of, total number of bipoles. So I went through those magnetogram images and picked up some of the bipoles that I mentioned earlier and counted how many were new cycle and how many were old cycle in each of the hemispheres and summed them together. As you can see, it's following a nice parabola and started off back in 2019 with most of the bipoles being from solar cycle 24. Now that situation has reversed itself with solar cycle 25 beginning to dominate. I can use the same bipole data 
to get some idea when solar minimum was. Here I just count the number of uh, bipoles of either uh, cycle and see when they go to a minimum. This is the plot of that curve and it, over the last year and a half. And you can see that uh, the minimum is about the end of August, the beginning of September. That's pretty much when right in the middle of that patch when there were almost no sunspots on the sun for six months. So we have two different methods here, the number of sunspots and also the number of bipoles, both indicating a similar date for the a minimum amount of magnetic activity on the sun, which would be autumn of 2019. Let's draw some conclusions from all of this. First, I believe solar minimum was probably in autumn of 2019. So we'll have to wait a while to see when the actual date is calculated. Obviously, solar cycle 24 is winding down both from the number of sunspots and also the number of bipoles that are consistent with solar cycle 24. And uh, solar cycle 25 is ramping up at the same time. So that means that we are transitioned into solar cycle 25. I believe that solar cycle 25 will be similar to or slightly larger than solar cycle 24. That makes it look rather bad for all those people that were predicting a grand solar minimum. All those projections will now have to shift another 11 years later. So until next time, stay safe and goodbye.